Ah, that's where all the trouble began. That smile. That damn smile. Say, uh, Void, if you, uh, if you want to leave at any point today, that would be... That'd be real nice, because there's a lot of stuff left to do in this campaign that really can't do while you're here. Welcome to day three of constant RimWorld raiding with your good friend Void and Ohm. And 100% less unstable biological weapon, Captain Cuba. Don't worry. He's safely locked away in the... Frrrr. <laughs> Today, I have a very simple goal for us to achieve. And I say simple, even though we've been trying to do it for the past four episodes. I'm not asking for much. All I want is a weapon capable of getting past beta poly armor, which is still something that we are really, really suffering with. I've queued up 10,000 steel on all the deep drills because the one thing I want to build is this thing here, the godly cell crafted, just to see how good it is. But when we get this, we probably will never have to worry about resources again. It is a little bit on the expensive side, though. 10,000 steel, 7,500 plasteel, 100,000 silver, 450 components. 50 advanced components? Holy shit. Uh, the rest of it is actually fairly straightforward. The five Persona kills is something we can throw together pretty fast. So I'll go ahead and queue those up very quickly. And then the qubit processors, we've got 10 of those. It really is just the basic raw resources that we're looking for. When we've got that thing, and if it's good and worth the cost, we can put that on our crafting tables, on our machining tables. We can have our people train up and just do a little bit of recreation, live their best life while the robots do all the machinery in the background and craft, hopefully, some sort of crazy, ridiculous weapon. One way I think we can facilitate that is that yesterday we finally unlocked the ability to do uh, quantum research with this quantum device. And I guess between that and the cosmic hydroponics, we might finally be able to defeat medieval era factions. <laughs> <laughs> you ever think, ah, uh, you ever think beta poly might be a little bit underbalanced? Now, I've played with Science Never Stops before, and I understand it's had many, many updates since the Robo Daddy series well over a year ago, which is when I last played it. But I haven't ever tested the Project Rim Factory Insanity. What the hell did you just make? Legendary Marine Gloves, thank you. So, I want to go quite hard on this mod before we, before we really do anything else. Or not. No, no, no. What I remember that was, I really do want to fight some more mechanoids. Hey, your expressage, by the way. Oh, good. Uh, I mean, look, drop pod raids right in the middle of the base are pretty easy to contend with, so I'm not too concerned about that. What I am concerned about is we're playing on Merciless Void and there's only 10 drop pods. What the hell is going to come out of these? Oh. Hello there. Oh, it's just assaulters. Oh, well, that's really not a problem at all. The assaulter weapons can breach armor, right? They're high armor penetration or they ignore armor entirely or something like that. I vaguely remember at some stage there being a mechanic similar. To be honest, I also play, you know, 300 mods a month. So I, it is kind of difficult to keep up with what the hell's going on at any point. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I think in the future, we'll just kind of draft up a single person. Corrupt is pissed because his father arcade is the second time. They're still upset about that. And actually, there's good reason for it. Uh... The game's running pretty damn slow. The game at maximum speed is running at like one fifth of what it is supposed to be. So even though, you know, we've got the 18 times speed or whatever, things are still taking quite a long time to do anything. They look like, it, it looks like it's deceptively fast because they've got those ridiculous speed skin suits, which to be honest is 90% of the problem as well, but never mind. Somebody said in the comment section that in a desperate ploy to escape the prison and probably stuff them down the IO port, which is... Honestly, although I was sad about them losing, that's my head cannon because that's incredible. Oh, and somebody else also said that the growable spice included with vanilla expanded is a spice that you can use without any negative effects, without the constant high blood pressure and heart attacks we've been putting up with. But alternatively, we could just powder up luciferium and sprinkle that in their food, which is very high tier. Keg Denta has died, cause malnutrition. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't check because I there might be a raid loading in right now. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. The substantial mosquitoes. Okay, we'll worry about that in a second. Keg Denta, what the hell happened? Oh, man. Food poisoning. Oh! Okay, it was more likely the food poisoning that finished him off. So, two mangled scar from the brains. Okay, five out of 12, 42% efficiency. His, what happened is his consciousness dropped below... Oh, his consciousness dropped below the threshold because of the... So a combination of natural degradation, mangled scar would do it. High blood pressure, does that affect consciousness? Oh my god, yeah, look at that. Uh, Wow. Well, the malnutrition doesn't affect conscious. Does it not? I think it probably does. Oh, well that's shit. Okay, that's partly my fault because I forced Ohm to 
make a bunch of advanced components to try and get the godly crafter done. Didn't realize that malnutrition within the period of time Holmes spent crafting those components would be enough to kill a man. But he was in a very weird situation there. Oh, cake dinner, I'm so sorry. That was avoidable. It was reserved by Dumbo. Oh, was Dumbo about to go and feed him too? Well, that's even worse. <laughs> All right, well, that was a... Uh, hello? What the hell am I looking at? The fuck is this? Okay, we've got a tiny drug child. We've got a two-headed polar bear and a centipede. Now, that side isn't too mad, okay? Two-headed polar bear, I will admit, is a bit weird. This, though, this is weird. They've got a Cerberus, an advanced centipede, a fucking tank, and Goku. I've never seen a vat-grown princess before, either. Whoa. Giant genetically engineered insectoid responsible for creating a large amount of unfertilized insectoid eggs. Mere shadow of a natural insectoid queen. Huh. She is known to be the Yelper. Well, aren't we all? A tank is kind of horrifying. Okay. Well, I guess we'll, um... I guess we'll treat this with a little bit of caution, because I have no idea exactly what that does. The fact that it's got the words Orion Corporation written on it kind of scares me. <laughs> this is already this is already up to an incredible start. One of our oldest and most powerful colonists just died because they didn't get a meal within five hours. And now we're being attacked by fan fiction. I think the safest thing to do, we'll send home down here to deal with these guys first, because these guys are a... are really probably not a problem. Then I'm going to get everyone else to defensive positions. Okay. Ohm, kill the lot. This should be an easy one. Although that guy with a laser sword in one hand and a chainsaw in the other is uh, pretty high tier. Nice. Oh my god, are they sidecasters too? Uh, yeah, be a little bit more careful about that. I absolutely love these amalgam pirates. It is quite literally just random bullshit go. They can just pull from any potential factions or, or anything in the game basically to attack you with. It's this one here, amalgam pirate band from Faction Blender. They are... Just so fucking good. And actually, they're, they're probably going to be one of the, the, the factions, particularly when we get to the higher levels, that challenge us the most out of everybody. Avion, are you soloing this entire thing? I was trying to be cautious about it, but I guess it doesn't matter. Because when we get up to things like Arcotech, like the really high tier Arcotech and Science Never Stops, the Amalgam Pirate faction should be able to still pull from all of the various things we can get. Is it still what they can and leave? I don't think so. There was another band. Ah, it's the, it's the, it's the tank. Arcadius, kill the tank, because I really don't want that thing doing any damage. Oh, shit, be careful. Damn, that tank is, um, well, tanky. I didn't want to say it, but can we capture it? Is it an animal? Could we, could, could we tame the tank? Do me a favor. Get rid of your drills a second. Damn it. They punched a tank to death. Half of them don't even have bionic arms. How does that make sense? Well, nobody has bionic arms. Except for Rome, of course. We've got one survivor, Masami. Oh, they're 44. We can't we can't really afford to take anyone over the age of 30. By the time we actually get around to recruiting them, they're already going to be old and washed up. Well, I mean, to be fair, they're already above the age of 30. <laughs> oh, you know, it's a large infestation when the sound effects don't really work, right? Okay. Oh, my God. Look at the debris. What the fuck? <laughs> God, I don't think I've ever had an infestation, A, that large before, or B, have the spawn effect go on for that long. <laughs> I almost dread to... Uh, 88 mega spiders. Okay, only 88. That's fine. 54 mega scarabs. Okay, you know how it is. 59 spellipedes. It's fine. Uh, 23 royal mega spiders. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, megapedes. I can't even click the megapedes because there are too many insects. Uh, 33 megapedes. And then the queen. I mean, I know I said large infestation. Uh... <laughs> ah. That was not really what I was expecting. How do you... How do you deal with this? Because normally, this is where I would say, right, we're going to craft a rocket launcher or something like that. This, though, it might be impact hammer time. Now, we can't use these normally. We can't use these to fight, say, mechanoids that drop right into the base because the chance of the explosions happening and killing A, our own people, and B, destroying everything we've got is pretty significant. 
However, against a group of 200, 300, 400 insects, this could be quite funny. It is 500 adamantium a hammer. So maybe we should build it out of something else. What about what about star steel? That could work. Maybe star steel has pretty good blunt damage. Uh, sharp damage is 200%. Blunt damage is also 200%, but by comparison, I'm pretty sure adamantium is uh, way higher. 250% blunt damage. I don't think the difference is significant enough to wait until we get enough adamantium. Bear in mind the amount of effort it actually takes to craft that. So we'll just go star steel and adamantium impact hammers. And then I think I'll probably limit everybody to the base because I think... Even with everything we've got, if someone wanders into that, they're probably gonna die. Oh, nice, yeah. I was just thinking uh, it'd be quite a nice change to get some... To get some insects on the map. Six infested ship chunks. We've got one infested crash ship part. And, uh, that. <laughs> so I've expanded out the graveyard so that we can finally have a little funeral here for Keg Denter. And I've expanded it a little bit more than what we need right now because... Let's be honest, this might end up being a little bit, uh, a little bit messy. Goodbye, little keg denter. Closest living relative is Smelly. Husband of Bonspons Bons as well? Is Bonspons Bons still alive? Ah, uh, I'm not entirely sure they are. Oh, yeah, there we go, Bonspons. Bons. So Bonspons Bons is going to be pissed for quite a while. Plus 43, though, from the sharing the burden. Oh, somebody escorted Paro to prison. Oh, well, at least you're still here. But for a second, you digitized yourself inside the freezer. <laughs> How else could we... Could we torture this person instead? Okay. Okay, look. Ever since the Captain Cuba incident on the 12th of Jugast, we we banned bioweapons. For our people, at least. Um, sorry? Is that combat music? Okay. I guess they got bored. Definitely wasn't any of our people because I've limited them all to inside the base. Right. Now, let's be honest. If they're coming to us, this is this is way easier because we could just fight them in a kill box and be absolutely fine. Just fight them one at a time. Sending our people out there, probably a nightmare because we could get potentially eight insects at once fighting our people with reinforcements immediately going in. This is doable, though. This is fine. Or not. Or they were just coming over here to sleep. Well, look. What was that? Stroopers, fuck off. Do not, do not wake them. <laughs> One side effect, I suppose, of having the kill box decently far away from most of the base is our idiot people going through here, which is not really what I want, thank you. Now that they're out there, though, I, I, I mean, we could send omens who go and bait them out pretty easily, I think. Let's be careful with things, though. So no more fire at will. Once everybody's in position, we'll give them a little poke. I don't know how far we got with the impact hammers. I'll stick with it because it could be quite funny. Yeah, we only got five of them built. Oh, no, we've got four adamantium ones too. Okay, that's not terrible. Ohm, just go give that one a little poke and then we'll see if we can jetpack him through the doors fast. This is going to need some... Okay. Get out. Nice. And go through the door. We should be fine. And now we wait. Oh, God. I'm just hoping that's enough to bait them out and around. Good shit, good shit, good shit. We do need to kill them pretty fast. Otherwise, they'll start turning back again. Uh, Uwu, move forward. All we've got to do is kill one, and then the rest will follow suit. Nice. That'll do it. That, 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 that should be everything. All of the royal insects, though, the mega spiders and the megapedes, are just kind of hanging around. But, I mean, even so, if we only have to fight those afterwards, it's 34, 27. That's still more than doable. <laughs> Inspired trade. Yeah, no, I can, I can see why. Yeah, why wouldn't this be inspirational? Where are they going? Melee attacking red doormat. Is there a doormat under the wall? Oh, holy shit. The queue to get into the base. Well, shit, in hindsight, the six people on the front lines could have dealt with that quite easily. Let's send these guys out the back then to go and deal with the last of the... Uh, the last of the insects out here. I kind of worry that when we hit them, that might wake up. We'll see how it goes. Here it comes. I feel a bit more confident when it's only, you know, 20 versus 50 rather than 20 versus 200. Oh, look at them holding the line. No damage yet either at all. Whoa, where's Magic Baby? Magic Baby, you're only five. Maybe you shouldn't be out here. <laughs> They're going to hunt down the stragglers. I think some ran all the way around to go and attack. Yeah, to go and attack the turbine. We won't bother building those back up again. I think our grid excess is um, 450,000 watts. I think we'll be fine. And then our secondary group can... Finish off the rest. Well, that was way easier than I thought. Holy shit. Just looked way, way scarier than it actually was. Sure, it might not be strictly legal in the colony, but 
regular people don't have to know. So I've made our lovely prisoner some plague lesions and some butcher's nails. They are secured upon the fabrication bench a berserk chip for him too. And we tortured this guy for months and months and months on end. Well, let's not say tortured. We'll just say gave him inadequate living conditions. So if we said, hey, you can go free, we just want to do a, a little bit of experimentation on you first, he'd probably be more than happy at the chance. You know, I don't think we ever looked at Major Bomber Pepper Stasius. That is uh, Uwu and Toy Boy Roy's child. What are your stats are like? Heavy, sleeper, clumsy, tough. So beautiful. That That is actually working because we've made everybody in the colony beautiful through plastic surgery. That's now inherited. So I've given him butcher's nails, the plague legions, the berserk chip, which at the press of a button, I can make this man. We have control over making this man go berserk, which is always very handy. I'm going to give him a neuro accelerated spine and some muscle wires too. So that he's actually capable of doing some damage when we send him back to the empire. Now, Ohm is kind. Ohm is kind for his people. And this might be the best way to ensure that his people are safe in the future. Turning the empire's bestower into a disease carrying berserker is Fairly high tier, I think. There you go. Goodbye, Paro. On the surface, Ohm's continued reputation of being a kind man is pretty much secured. We're sending him away with the safety of a trade caravan. We basically solved his old age problems by giving him a couple of muscle wires and neuro accelerated spine. What they don't know is beneath the surface, he is gonna go berserk any second. Goodbye, Paro. Thank you for visiting. What if we get any opinion on that? <laughs> Paro exited them have healthy. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So we've got all five AI cores. We have the 10,000 steel lowered into it. We just need the 7,500 plasto. How close are we to that? We're nowhere even remotely close. Brilliant. I guess we'll forget about the infinite resources for a little while and we'll carry on with our EMC side of things. So this will allow us to unlock an atomic reconstructor. Transmute your energy cubes into raw matter. Functions as a blueprint database. Turn your EMC back into raw resources again. Okay. I have no idea what any of that means in that order, but I'm sure we'll find out. As far as I know, the way this works is you take your excess energy, you convert it into EMC cubes that you can then transmute into other raw resources, as it said. But that's just a guess. I have no idea what machines we need, what kind of ratios we need or anything like that. And because that's also going to take a while, I think I might send St. Arcadius himself, who isn't good at many things. For some reason, I think there was an issue with the cloning. Maybe a mechanic that I didn't know that we had to worry about, uh, like the brain templating, for example. St. Arcadius isn't good at crafting. Kind of like the whole dynasty down there. What St. Arcadius is good at, though, is, um, wants a murder and destruction. But what on earth are these? AI persona production. Well, we can already do that, but leads to something called auto data rummaging. Then we've got nanomaterials. Allows us to build X composite and Y composite. What the hell are those? They're incredibly beautiful. 40 beauty. Wow, you're not wrong. What about the Y composite? Uh, much less beautiful, but also offer a greater boost to cleanliness. Or we can go for edibles that would put a couple of people out of work, which look, I like I like being able to automate the base, but I also like it when our people are actually doing things around the base. Let's go for this one. Fucking shotgun diplomacy? Is that another, yeah, high blood pressure again? I think I need to try and figure out what the hell's going on with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely not Age Destroyer. I guess it is just a case of going too hard on the meals for too long. I assume when they when they filter out all of these... Is there any way to fix it? See, you've only got Major, so I'm probably not so worried about Dr. Toyboy Roy. Minor, Extreme, so Uwu might be, on the, might be on the chopping block. And I assume the longer they go without eating the salty meals, maybe the more it will recover. But it's not like we can just swap out their heart because it affects... It's, it's a whole body effect, not specifically a heart effect. 59, though. Wow. That is insanely unfortunate. Hopefully, that'll be the last of them. I certainly hope so. Only surviving family member there is Smelly. Poor Smelly is not going to be too happy about this. Grandparent and mother and uncle. Holy crap. Wow, there is way more to this mod than I anticipated. Oh, there's loads more to this. Whoa. Eventually, we can craft Vanametrics. Wow. And then there's uh, an Archotech research at the very end, the theory of everything. Figure out how the simulation really works by hacking into it. Let's get a little meta. Let's get a little meta, Ohm. Local YouTuber strangled to death by funny green man. So while I wait for my inevitable murder at the hands of a self-aware Rimmel character, we're going to send Arcadius out to go and uh, deal with a few factions. Also, look at this. Arcadius is worth more than Ohm. Wow, I'm actually kind of surprised given that Ohm has... Arcotech limbs. Arcadius has just some weird arms that we grew in a vat. 
So let's just send him out with... Do we even want to send him with anything? I suppose a little bit of food probably couldn't hurt. Friendship ended with gourmet meals. Gourmet meals are my new best friend. Send him a few cocktails too for uh, for good measure. Then depending on how long it's out for, I'll also send him with some insect jelly just to uh, cover the journey back. I've got a couple of spare pods as well in case something really terrible happens. I think he'll probably be fine, but you never know. P versus MP. Edible synthesis. Ryman hypothesis. Quantum foam manipulation. The MC power generation maximum efficiency increased to 2,500%. Yeah, of course. I was actually just thinking that myself. Ah, uh, to break RSA encryption, all you need is a cure for cancer. And then there's some uh, complete nonsense. <laughs> I love the fact it took home 15 seconds to crack P versus MP. That's high tier. Well, that was a fun morning. I'm making some bioweapons. I think I'll go crack out the unsolvable. Uh, let's go for, uh, Arco technology sounds pretty good. Now, what I want to do with Arcadis is wipe out medieval, tribal or factions, maybe the elders. Sending a single person to deal with the elders is probably a high tier play, except if he goes berserk. Who cares? Well, uh, unless it counts as the caravan being lost, but I don't think it would. Our goal is the lower tier factions, industrial, medieval, and tribal. I guess we'll shoot him over here to Lambra Beach, and then we'll just head back through... These guys try and wipe out this tribal faction and this faction here we have two people kidnapped and apparently working for. It's be quite interesting to see if we can uh see if we can recover them. Oh weird, look at this map. Whoa, look at their base too. What the hell have they got in here? A giant statue of Pang Lee, whoever that is. Dart. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at all these cybernetics. These are way more advanced than anything we could ever build. Advanced Barnic Arms. 100% manipulation, 200% body part efficiency. Holy shit. If I'd have known a tribal nation had the best I bionics that we could possibly get our hands on, I assume right now until we get to the science never stop stuff, I would have come here way earlier. Ah, of course. Yeah, I was just about to say that, actually. We'll deal with more research when we've tidied up this base with Arcadia. So this faction does have some psychosters. What the hell is going on with this base? Hands, hearts... Arms. We've got two legs, too, because Arcadis could be in for a hell of a fucking upgrade. Bionic eyes, one bionic foot, one bionic ear. How have they got this? Okay, I think because they are sidecasters, we need to avoid a direct confrontation. Let's go through here. <laughs> I think Arcadis might have hit a trap. Not that it really matters. What have we got here? Carbon arms, kidneys just left out in the open. Let's go in here, see if we can find some more treasure, and take them very carefully, building to building. Oh, well, there's a bunch more. Okay. Bionic feet, eyes, eyes. No legs still. Cybernetic liver is quite nice. Advanced bionic hand. I kind of wish I'd have sent someone else to help carry all this crap home. Advanced bionic eye. An element X32 grand statue. Okay. Arcotech sculptures. What the fuck? <laughs> These guys are richer than we are. Turning the tables on them though. They've gathered so much colony wealth. They've got a single raid from Arcadius. Oh my god. It never ends. Cybernetic so leather, advanced bionic dentures, a pebble limestone large statue. And the best part is there's barely anyone here. Tribes people are attacking your colonists. Okay, fine. Let's put Arcadia somewhere then where we don't have to worry about... Worry about him potentially getting berserked. I think we'll just put him here and let them come to us. Especially down your own doors. Uh, sure, yeah. Well, that was easy. Uh, I suppose we'll see what we've actually gotten from all of this. It is just room after room after room filled with this shit. I'm going to send someone who can deconstruct doors because this is going to take so, so, so long. Plus, it would be quite nice to actually be able to carry all of these things back. Good lord. Look at this stuff. Healer maximums, resurrect maximums, 22 luciferium. An insane amount of artwork and sculptures, none of which are particularly valuable. Well, these are the lower tier ones anyway. Uh, titanium Grand Sculpture Legendary is worth 19,000. Beta Poly Shrine of the Crater, that's ringing some bells. Look at the bionics. These are the insanely overpowered ones. We only got one advanced bionic leg, which is a bit of a shame, but I'll take it anyway. Four Orion Exoskeletons, I recall those give 80% moving and manipulation. I guess we'll sort by market value and see... I mean, look, I should probably just take apart all of the Alpha and Beta Poly things before we leave. Oh, shit, maybe we should take apart all of this stuff before we leave and just take the raw resources home. We definitely have to take these. You can't make them. You can only buy them from orbital traders. Rarely. Oh, shit, even if we take all that, we can't carry anything else. I have to take these. They are, they are too good not to. Unreal. All of that from a base defended by six 
tribal level characters. <laughs> New lovers? Who is left at this point? Bonsaba and Siala. Oh, Bons Bons is avian, but I'm fairly sure they still have a, yeah, a normal life expectancy. Cybernetic stomach, 100% eating, 100% metabolism, 200% body part efficiency. Bionic eyes give 100% sight each and 200% efficiency each. The arms are 100% manipulation each. The livers give 100% to blood filtration. Metabolism. This is just nuts. Uh, this is this is actually just full on insane. You know what, Arcadius? It's a good day to be you, my friend. We'll see what we can actually upgrade him with, I assume. Well, look, it's, it's not really worth it giving him the crafting arms because he's he's a he's essentially a combat character. The 5% the melee cooldown in both of his arms is way more useful. What about Ohm? They are better. The cybernetic arms are better than Arcotech arms. So I suppose we'll just go ahead and upgrade little home then although well, there's a lot on the line for this i do trust dr Tallboy roy with his 27.41 medical now bread and money's still under the effects of anesthetic right now his blood filtration 705 <laughs> percent i can't believe we found a way to make ohm even better that is that is insane and the worst part is i still think there's even more beyond that in the highest tier of the science never stops bionics are you telling me this will allow us to build Oh, it ties into more architect garbage. So with this, we can make psychic emanators. We could just build them. Arco technology unlocks something called a computronium. Of course, yep. Learn how to produce computronium to enhance the intelligence of an existing AI persona core. Okay, this is insane. The anesthetic is wearing off. He still is woozy. So max 70% consciousness lowers everything else. Not only that, but Benjamin, we have the mod that adds a mechanic whereby they have to get used to all of their new their new limbs. If you remember, right at the start of the campaign, when Ohm first woke up, he couldn't use his arms and legs because he just wasn't used to them yet. Even though he is under anesthetic and not used to any of these limbs, he has 209% manipulation. Do you ever think we've gone too far? Do you ever think we've really gone too far? Look at how fast he's researching, even with that, for God's sake. Vanometrics. That allows us to build an AI floor, whatever the hell an AI floor is. Healer, mech serums, resurrector, mechs, vanometric power cells, Z composite tile. Ludicrously beautiful and offers moderate cleanliness. 90 per tile? I assume there'll be another thing we get to build with the, uh, what are they? Uh, the, the, the E generators. And on the subject of that, I guess we'll see if we can figure it out. So we've got the energy condenser already built, correct? Yeah, that's this one here. Then there's an atomic reconstructor which actually fits perfectly in the middle of the room. What does this do? Settings, bills, what do you do? Make EMC, take one item. Take any item and turn it into one EMC. Oh, interesting. So in one item at once. Oh, no, no, it, what it probably makes is a variable amount of output depending on the item that you put into it. Each EMC energy cube weight is exactly 1G each. Oh, okay. So rather than... Rather than breaking everything down in the kill box, we take apart the Ruby Electric Crematorium, which is a shame because I do I do like the Ruby Electric Crematorium. We put all of our excess products or our waste products into here. And then we have this take apart whatever is in there. Why don't we reinstall this then adjacent to the kill box crap? I love that our first building in the game is also going to be used to break the laws of physics. That's quite a nice, that's quite a nice progression for the series. So as long as we're very careful about what we put in here, can we just go bills and then say make EMC, uh, do forever, add those two as well, and just set the filters to accept everything. And as long as there's only a certain range to that, we'll just grab whatever's in there and spit it out, right? Uh, searching for ingredients. Oh, we can't quite get to the middle of it. Bollocks. It's another big deal. We just put down an output port. So we'll put that into another port and i guess we'll want a specific storage unit for just the energy cubes at that point right so we'll put down another one over here so from this we're going to pull from the kill box crap and we're going to say everything like they just output absolutely everything that then grabs that turns it into emc okay and that'll just keep working forever whoa that we fuel with emc so we'll output that into there that's quite all right so that one, we probably want to go into the manufacturing one because that'll output whatever it is we want it to output. And we can output anything with that. Arco fragments, Arco mass. Oh my God, this is insane, huh? 
Is that is that quite literally any raw resource by the looks of it? And how much energy is that? Oh, yeah, 400 watts. Yeah, yeah, why not? This is very high tier that we have a system in place to automatically suck up any dead bodies, items, whatever they've got equipped, whatever they drop into a digital storage unit. That then convert it down into raw energy and then output into anything we want. So in theory, we could turn void into T, which I feel might be the most appropriate outcome for void I ever could have possibly imagined. And this EMC duplicator, what does that do? It just duplicates EMC. Is that all there is to it? A bun up tasky duplicate is set to duplicate EMC. Every day the amount of EMC stored grows by 5%. And as soon as temple with it will destroy all the stored EMC. How does it work then? So you just fill it with EMC, allow it to keep growing by 5% every single day, and then it, and then you can just withdraw from it. So it's a, it's a, it's an EMC bank account with interest. I feel like I should probably build the walls out of something a bit more durable, given that we've got this physics-defying uh, manufacturer here that's defended by walls with 240 hit points. Oh my god, we've actually done it. I've devised a method of turning raiders into tea. Wow. I... <laughs> I think technology may have gone a little bit too far. The conversion rate is pretty horrible. Uh, it, it's quite a significant amount of EMC per tea leaf. Uh, 30 specifically, but this stuff churns out EMC like crazy. If we take a look at the storage, it, it, it's somewhat impractical to hold it because of, well, just how much is produced from raw resources are. Now, if I'm not mistaken, all of our Arco mass went somewhere. I have no idea where it's gone, but it's gone somewhere. I think it was all stolen during a raid quite a long time ago. If we want to get into the Arco tech stuff, we are going to have to produce more Arco mass. So it makes sense to swap this thing over to... Producing that to make up for whatever was gone. Arco mass is cheaper than tea leaves, if you're curious. We can make it run faster, but it uses up far more resources. Okay, well, I'm look, look, we're not desperate for it right now, so we might as well just let it go at its uh, at its regular pace. And then we'll output that to manufacturing storage. And this thing as well, why don't we just go ahead and withdraw 50,000? Uh, not enough EMC. MC in storage unit, 51,000. I've got to disagree with you there, friend. What if we just go 25,000 then? Uh, excuse me? <laughs> ah! Ah! Golly, I must be doing something wrong. Oh, no, hang on. We want to deposit into the machine. Uh, not deposit out of the machine, which does make some sense, I suppose. Right, let's go 30,000 then. Into here. And that will duplicate that by 5% per day. It's not going to be massive. But I assume we could just withdraw any more into it whenever we feel like. Oh my god, we're already full. Um. Wh why? Why can't you put any more in here? Is it... Total number of stacks, 80. Okay. What do you mean no storage space? Just put it in here. What is wrong with you? Oh my god, look at how fast this thing is filling up. 319,000 in the storage unit. Okay, well, so we're going to just go ahead and withdraw uh, another... 300,000. There we are. Ideally, I suppose we want to fill up the duplicator as much as possible and then level off the interest, right? So let's say for now, no target fuel level on this thing. Look at this. 10,000 steel, 7,500 plus steel, 100,000 silver, 450 components. Apparently, we're missing the 50 advanced components. But if I go to the crafting bench, 50 advanced components. Where are they? 46 advanced components. You're a, you're a, you're a liar. That's what you are. You're a liar. We'll go up to 60. Oh, on it now. 56. Right. Now, we take that, and you plug it into here. Strupris, fuck off. No offense. <laughs> Four out of five. Ohm. Ohm. Boom. One godly crafter. How does it work? I have no idea. So here's what we're going to do to test it. I don't think we got much jade, right? Do until... Oh, we got a lot of jade. Okay. <laughs> titanium. We probably don't have much titanium. Oh, for fuck's sake. Silver. We haven't got much silver because we just used it all on this friggin' thing. We'll say 10,000 silver. Right? Then we'll click on this. We'll overclock it. Boom. Massive. Granted, it makes absolutely no difference in this scenario, but that's fine. And then we say begin. Oh. 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 Oh, good lord. <laughs> oh, and Wang can work on it at the same time. Well, that is, um... Would you look at that? That is staggering. 
Thank you, robot. We'll take whatever bills we can get out of these slow things. 5,000 steel, 2,500 plastic steel, 500 uranium. And now we will never need another resource again. No more waiting for plasma drills. No more waiting for mining robots. Just pure, unbridled, overpowered resource generation. What a time to be alive. What are you doing with all this fucking silver, though? If we could get one more of these churning out gold, dumping that directly into the killbots crap, which is then converted into EMC, which we're then putting in the duplicator. I mean, eventually we're going to have so much. I don't know what I'll do with it, but we'll have so much. Get me Vanometrics. Hyper overpowered home, hyper overpowered resource generation. We could turn whatever we want into anything else. I feel like we're almost post ultra tech already. Lock the door. Lock the door. Get this man to finish everything. Edible synthesis. Done. Manufacturables production. What, from EMC? Oh, well, that's incredible. We could turn just base steel or silver or gold into uh, advanced components. P persona cores if we wanted to. Oh my god, is that the last two? No, because these go on to unlock other things. Perfected food preparation. A nutrient processor. Oh, interesting. Oh my god, that's the new technology level. Bear in mind, we only need 95%. So the final one is Cosmic Hydroponics. And then we're through to Arcotech. And to be honest, I feel like, yeah, we really are through to Arcotech. Oh my god. Arcotech Technology Tier 1. The theory of everything. Figure out how the simulation really works by hacking into it. No, 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 no. That one will never be complete. <laughs> unlocks research. The second generation unlocks the Cosmic Analyzer. Okay. I think... That is an incredible point to leave it here for today. We have cracked this game wide open. The world is our oyster. All of the resources, the EMC, everything. It's ours. I would love to build more of these things and get them on every single crafting station going. But for today, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And tomorrow, we go into the final era. Arcotech. Wow. Ohm's home. What a, what, a, what a time to be alive. I'm, I'm genuinely surprised we got here so fast. I feel like the Ultra Tech era, though it is full of, well, evidently completely insane shit, actually was quite a small era. It was a lot of research that directly led on from other research rather than being lots of various different mods and various different mod branches, right? So that was, uh, that was way quicker than I anticipated. Thank you to the executive producer patrons for making this series possible in the first place. Apologies if this is very slightly out of date. I've been playing catch up for the past couple of days to stay on top of everything. But I'll be putting up a Patreon video hopefully over the next couple of days with some uh, with some stuff in it that will hopefully be worth watching. Thank you to Sweetsy, Boop, Tompage, K, Aromatic Fool, That Gay Commie, OSM Owen, Zevenwolf, Nildraith, Tenacious Bloom, Xylo, Carmen Copeland, Arabs, Brambio, Super careful, fragile lipsticks, actually atrocious. Don't wipe the grim. Anthony Scavuzzo and Dan the Man. Thank you guys for your support. The executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Much appreciated. Thank you as well to Thistress Marana. Hey, I'm Alex, Cass, Armani, Logical Builder, Mantle, Pockies, House of Blues, Donald, Aka, Super Nanny 089, Kipos, GV, Edzuki, Vegan Slayer, Spirelli, and Empty Machine. See you guys all tomorrow.